I am Kamal Murray. Let's talk tennis. I know every block, every corn, everything that happens uh, on every block and every. You know, staying in a solution skill, you transfer that to your everyday life, then it helps you sort of deal with everyday challenges that come up. One of the keys to an athlete becoming successful is that they have to be themselves. 27 courts, indoor, outdoors, in the middle of Chi Town. This is incredible. What's up guys, it's Carrie, and we have landed in Chicago, the home of the excess tennis facility. The love, talent, and passion for tennis has never left Kamau. His lust for the sport led him to leave corporate America, and in 2008, he saved the very facility that he himself learned to play tennis in, now appropriately called Excess Tennis. And as if that wasn't enough, he went on to coach star tennis player Taylor Townsend and now superstar Sloane Stevens, grabbing four titles in 2016. Excess uh, was a play on the word excess, which means greater than normal, better than average. Um, and so, you know, I, like I said, I had a full-time job. I had plenty to do, right? And if I were going to do this and get involved in this way, I wanted to do it, like, well. Mm -hmm. right? I wanted to just create, you know, something small and average. I wanted to create a unique opportunity uh, and use my time, my expertise, my relationships wisely. Right? And so we create something huge. And so we've successfully done that. We've got great partners, the city's on board, great donors. Uh, supporters from all across the world um, and so I think we were successful in kind of creating something extremely unique. Every job that I've ever gotten has got I've gotten because of my tennis right and every relationship or every conversation um, it goes in a different direction because I play tennis and it's had this sort of unique skill because mm -hmm. um, people look at me and obviously it's on basketball track right yeah um, and so you know you say oh no I grew up playing tennis like, huh? from 72nd and Jeffrey uh -huh. right so um, I, I like it I, I think it creates interesting twist and I like to see people's reactions. I think it's cool. It, yeah. It, so. It's a good reaction like he's getting the last laugh now. Right. <laughs> I last week was talking to Murphy Jensen and honestly he said something that was that struck a chord because it was such great advice and he said you need to know how to lose. Mm -hmm. He said that's what makes a great player mm -hmm. and a great person. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I think that was great advice just even for a, you know, a human being, not mm -hmm. just a tennis player, but do you have anything in particular? So my greatest advice okay. actually came from Billie Jean King, right? Okay. And she always says, stay in the solution, All right? And so you see a lot of tennis players get stuck in a, in a, in a mistake. Mm -hmm. you know, they missed the forehand down the line, they probably should have went cross court anyway, right? Uh, and they're like stuck and they lose the next two or three points because yeah. they're mad about that point, right? Um, and I think that the key to tennis is you can lose points, but you don't want to lose multiple points in a row because then the match gets away from you, right? Um, so if you're staying in the solution, you're assessing, okay, why did I miss the ball? Maybe I should have took the ball across court, or maybe I didn't finish. Maybe, maybe I wouldn't blow the ball enough, or whatever that is, right? And if you take that, you know, staying in the solution skill, and you transfer that to your everyday life, then it helps you sort of deal with everyday challenges that come up. I think when I look at youth, there's too many, too many of them that get caught up in the emotion, they get caught up in, you know, the terrible feeling of where they are and not really thinking ahead or moving forward, right? And so uh, that would be my biggest advice for a tennis player, um, both on court and off court. I think it would be really extremely motivational and inspiring for the kids to see you on the court teaching, you know, during every free minute that you have. I think that's really cool and awesome. That was great to watch yesterday. Yeah. I think it keeps, it keeps me a fresh perspective. So uh -huh. you're, you're looking at two and you're breaking down technique, you're breaking down strokes, you're breaking down habits. I mean, having, you know, created kids from five years old all the way to 18, yeah. like a perspective from like, you know, start to finish, mm -hmm. where some people may have only worked with high performance players. Mm -hmm. You know, I can kind of sort of see the future in the six year old. Oh, okay, this kid's tall, long, so <laughs> you know, this kid's kind of short, we need a little bit of more top spin on the ball. I think it kind of, you know, having like these, these very mature players that I'm able to watch, it helps kind of, you know, help mold some of the youth and say, you know what, I think you could play like this person. You have an obvious love for the South Side. Did you grow up here? I did. Born and raised on the South Side of Chicago, so I grew up two miles south of where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Went to school halfway in between here and came here every day after school. Um, so I know every block, every corner, <laughs> everything that happens uh, on every block and every corner. So 
um, you know, I, I, I think that's sort of helped kind of grow the program because yeah. I kind of know where the kids are, who the leaders are, who the influencers are, how to put it all together and how to kind of corral the community around this initiative to help you know, are you sort of improve their trajectory. So when growing up, why tennis? Why did not basketball, baseball, soccer? Why tennis? Yeah, so I played basketball up until I was 14. Mm -hmm. And then at the age of 14, I was better at tennis than basketball, right? Even at 6'2", I was a shrimp on my high school, you know, basketball <laughs> team, which all these guys went to the NBA afterwards. So I figured that I would, you know, let them have the basketball mm -hmm. and I would go play tennis. Okay. Right? Uh, so I figured I had a better opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, to get to college uh, and have a successful career in tennis versus basketball. So what was that like then growing up, having all your boys going on to basketball and you just branching off and going to tennis? Oh, they made fun of me. Yeah. <laughs> even, to, even to this day, I mean, they used to call me Arthur Trash. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then you know, when I played in college, they tried to make my line name Serena Williams, right? I, <laughs> I wasn't having it, but that's what they tried. So, you know, I still kind of got the jokes, but um, I think that they were excelling in basketball and I was excelling in tennis. And I think when you're when you are, you know, in a community, if you're excelling at whatever you do, mm -hmm. then they start making jokes and they yeah. start hating, right? And they start to kind of respect, like, oh man, that's yeah. pretty cool. The dude is, you know, top whatever, or the dude is traveling. I saw him in the paper and he won this, he won that. And so I think that, you know, really for the youth on the South Side, I know we all want to play basketball, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if you dedicate yourself to tennis and you become good at it, then the community is going to respect it. Mm -hmm. Other than this great facility, let's talk about the obvious. You also are the coach for one of our great women players, mm -hmm. Sloan Stevens. How did that relationship evolve? Um, so I was coaching Taylor Townsend. Uh -huh. Sloan and Taylor played doubles together at Indian Wells. Okay. Um, and then we hung out, went out to dinner probably three nights in a row. Um, and then after Taylor went in a different direction, you know, Sloan and I kind of built a relationship, did a, a trial basis, and then you know, it became a permanent thing and last year she won three tournaments. I mean, it's with coaching, it's obviously really important that you and the player have a good just rapport, mm -hmm. not just instructional, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. like you're saying with Sloan, you guys get along really well and yeah. so I think that probably helps the relationship and like even her game grow yeah. because of that off-court relationship too, just being able to be personable with each other yeah. and get along. You and I are very similar in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we speak our mind, very honest, uh, very upfront, <laughs> um, private, yeah. um, and I think we work, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm like, she's a clear communicator, I'm a clear communicator, um, and I think that, you know, our success together last year was because we both had clear communication, you know. I don't, I don't see it as a job. Um, That's cool. But obviously I view her like, you know, I view one of the kids, you know, you're yeah. trying to help somebody, you know, fulfill their dream of becoming, you know, top ten in the world, top five in the world, winning the Grand Slam, making more money, whatever it is, you're still, helping somebody. Um, you know, one of the keys to uh, after becoming successful is that they mm -hmm. have to be themselves. Right? Yeah. And so, you know, if you provide an environment where a player can be themselves, you can really sort of dig in and get to know how to help them, how to help them maximize their opportunity. Um, I'm like straight up from the south side, yeah. so there's no judgment, <laughs> right? There's nothing that I really can't, I don't understand, I'm not yeah. like up here. Um, and so I think last year she was, it was able to be herself. Getting first-hand experience of the coaching skills and techniques from one of the top WTA's coaches was definitely oh. one for the books. And the electric energy of the excess tennis facility made the experience all that more unsurpassable. We rallied hard, served hot, and played a little tennis horse. I got inspired, I excelled my game, and I was definitely able to be myself. the new facility that mm -hmm. you're building mm -hmm. for Access Tennis. It is also going to be called Access Tennis? Mm -hmm. It's going to be called the Access Tennis Village. Um, and it's sort of, you know, we're going from seven indoor courts to 27, right? Mm -hmm. So it's huge, right? Uh, 
And so sort of at the Dilemmaan Village where you have uh, a community that is like really enthusiastic about the game and looking forward to the tournament every year. That's sort of the environment I want to create around tennis. Mm -hmm. So engaging that community, the schools in the community, the residents, uh, to come and try a new sport, a new opportunity over there for Washington Park. So that's called the Access Tennis Village and that's how we kind of came up with the name. Is this facility going to remain as well, or is everything no, going to move to the new No, we're going to transfer facility? everything a mile west of here. Move will be a relief, because mm -hmm. now we have a permanent home that's ours. We can kind of focus on the programming and expanding the programs, as opposed to sort of playing defense, trying to make sure we can just kind of continue to exist, right? Uh, the past three or four years, um, we've sort of been in this process to try to find a permanent home, because this was a temporary space, uh, and it was you know, slated to be something else. Mm -hmm. And so for year to year, we had to have this sort of nervousness around how long will we be able to stay here. We're targeting a September grand opening, so stay tuned for an exact date. I will be staying tuned because I'm gonna come out for it. All right, there we are, there it is. <laughs>